Welcome to an, another Great Card Basic demonstration. This is part four of the suite of videos that I'm doing for the PIC 16F 171 chip families. Hi, my name is Evan Venn. I'm a co-developer of Great Card Basic, uh, along with a host of other people who support the program. Um, and I'm taking you through these set of videos with respect to the new um, 16F 171 chip family. If you like this video, please like it. I mean, I need the thumbs up on the video. Um, I need comments. Um, please, please, please give us a thumbs up. Let's get into the, let's get into the meat of it. So this is um, the fourth video. Uh, today we'll be looking at sequencing the LEDs with a delay. So we're going to use some of the time functions um, to vary the value of the uh, rotation of, of our LEDs that we've been using so far and we're going to use the value from the ADC which is from the previous video. So let's just go through what I'm using as my hardware. I'm using a microchip low pin count demo board uh, but you can also build your own using the breadboard that Chris Roper of South Africa has laid out for you. I'm very grateful for that uh, but you can obtain the low pin count demo boards from eBay. They're on eBay. Okay. They're readily available. I've got one laid out in my lab here. Here it is. I've got a pit kit two. Uh, tomorrow I will change that to a pit kit three just to show it working. Oh, could I do? I could do that today actually. I'll do that today. Uh, here is the chip, the 16F, and I've got four LEDs, a potentiometer. Oh, let's have a look. There you go, a potentiometer and a switch, and we'll use all those during these set of videos. Let's get into the meat of it. So what we're going to be doing is what we're going to be doing is uh, going through uh, this overview okay so we're going to initialize the chip on the board um, we're going to create a variable to put the adc results in no different from the previous video we're going to read the adc but this time we're going to use a 12-bit read and that will give us a value of zero to 4095 and that is the native read for this particular chip a 12-bit read we're going to wait a particular amount of time based upon an ADC. We're going to set the LEDs to a particular value, and then we're going to do it again and again and again. So what I've got is a little overview for you in terms of a flow diagram that we can go through. I'll do that after a couple more vids for slides. So let's just look at time for a moment, because we're going to be using uh, the wait command. Um, it's an instruction, and it controls. it's going to control the speed of the LED rotation, as I've said, where speed is a time delay. It could be, uh, it could be hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds, tens of milliseconds, uh, microseconds, or tens of microseconds. And this is all calculated by Great Cal Basic based upon the chip frequency. And that's done automatically. So if you use the default chip frequency, which is the fastest the chip can go on its internal oscillator, it will always set it to the fastest internal chip oscillator clock speed. If there is no internal, it won't do that, of course. But that's quite important. That means that you can set it to... 32 megahertz, you can set it to 4 megahertz, and time will be consistently calculated for you. So you should play with that once you get into the uh, demonstrations yourself. The flow I spoke about is pretty simple. Okay, we're going to initialize the board, we're going to set our first LED, we're going to do a 12 bit read of the ADC, we're going to wait for a delay based upon that value. We're going to rotate the LEDs. We detailed how we do that before. And if the if the if it overflows, and remember that's the C the C bit in the status register, then we will reset the LEDs, or we will go around depending upon what happens. But you know we're going to do that quite easily. So I'm going to pull up the example code. We're going to review the results. Um, I will also show you some other things inside of the edit, inside the IDE and editor. So let's just go out to my desktop. I'm typing in GC Studio. G, I, do, I, I only have to put GCS in, and it pulls it up automatically. 
you can see it's loading it up. And now if I zoom in on my desktop, we can see that I've still got the um, chip, these chip range demonstrations, 16F17126 chip range demonstrations. If I click on that, it will open up the demonstrations for me. And that's where we left it yesterday. We left it, I might have collapsed it here, uh, just collapsed it through, but this is where we left it in demonstration 50, 050 show A to D value on LEDs. So let me just check the camera's working. It's always good to have the camera operational. It is, that's great. So what I'm gonna do is open up the um, Explorer. I'm gonna shut down this file here and open up 060 variable rotate the LEDs. There we go. And here's the program. Now, a bit of a trick here. We're gonna look at the top of the code. The rest of it is all in green, therefore it's comments. On the left hand side, we've been shutting down this Explorer, but we can see that we're getting different files appear. And those files are useful files, but you might not want to see them all the time. So an ASM file, I will explain later. A hex file is the machine specific hex file. An HTML file is the, is the file that is produced by the compiler that you can review it. And a list file, it's got more detail about some of the decisions the compiler has made. But I can get rid of this lot by, in this pane here, I press Control F and type in .gcb and it will just show me the GCB files. Then I can apply the filter by touching on the little arrow. Let me just show you that in GC code. There's a little, um, little upside down pyramid here. So I'll repeat that. Control F dot GCB. The moment I click on that, all the other files disappear. I end up with just the GCB files. Again, dot, dot GCB. I've now created a filter. So now if I look in the list, I can only see GCB files. Excellent. Let's double click 060 and get into the meat of it. I'm minimizing the Explorer. We've seen this before. This is hash chip 16F126. And if we wanted to click, set the clock speed to a different speed from the default, we would type in a frequency. And that could be 4, 8, 32, 16. Remember, if you wanted to know what the explicits were, open up pick info. If you look at the particular chip, 16F17126, when it comes up, here we go, look at the chip data and all the frequencies are laid out here for you. So this one supports 32, 32, 16, 8, 4, 1 and 2 on the internal oscillator. You can put other clock speeds on with an external oscillator, but clearly, and if I change those, all the times will still be correct. Some constants, we defined these constants yesterday. We have some constant, a constant for the port called LATC. We have some directions that we're setting for the LEDs to set them to digital out. We have defined that the potentiometer as a constant and then set it to in. And then we're into the main program. It commences here. Very simple. We're going to set the LEDs to um, an, an, in, an initial value. So RC0, 1, 2, all set to 0, and RC3 is set to 1. I have a mask, a bit of a constant for a mask, and that's quite useful. Um, we'll use that later on. And what I did here, if you notice, I defined a macro called this set of instructions. So I have a macro and I can call that at any time and it will set those four pins to that particular state. And I call it here, wait one second. So that is actually an instruction, wait one second. And then I introduce a new variable type here, a variable type of word. And a word variable has a range of zero to three, two, that's not true. It's uh, six, five, 
65355. I'll check with that in a minute. That's correct. And I'm then using ADC val, I'm setting that as a word. I need to do that because the range of um, the read ADC we'll be using is greater than the value of a byte. So I'm going to read it, read the ADC, and I'm going to put it into ADC val. Remember from the previous video, I'm using ANA0, which is connected to port A.0. Then I'm going to tell it to wait for the value, the return value in milliseconds. And then we're doing the rotate. And the rotate of the LEDs is no different from the previous. It will just rotate the LEDs. And when it gets to the end, it will then reset them back to the beginning. So what we're doing here is using the wait command based upon the, AD, the returned ADC value. Let me just program that up by pressing hex and flash. And a few seconds later, we will see a flash out on the board, which is great. And then we can see that the LEDs are now rotating. Well, that rotation is based upon the value of the pots. If I turn the pot, they get slower. That is the maximum delay based upon the value returned by the pot. If I rotate the pot the other way, it gets faster and faster and faster and faster until it looks like it's on permanently, but it's not here. It's just off slightly. It is just delaying slightly. Now, that's interesting, that, because that long delay is just too long. It's just, it's not good for your eyes. Okay. So we're going to come back to that to see how we can fix that in a moment. Here we go. We'll put it on a delay so we can see it in the camera. And what we're going to do later on in the videos is use the switch to have those LEDs turn in a different direction. So, what we've seen in the code, read an ADC value and wait for a few milliseconds. But that's that long delay, how do we change that long delay? We like a long, big delay, but it was too long. So let's just go back to PowerPoint for a minute to look how we can address that. So what we can do, we can actually scale and we can transform the value returned by the ADC. We can scale that to a different size so that we can use it usefully. And so the flow will be the same. We'll initialize. We will set the LED to um, the first LED. We'll read the ADC, wait for a delay, and then we will scale the result. I'm going to scale the result to something that we like. And I'm going to scale it between 2 milliseconds and 500 milliseconds. And we can change it to other values in a minute. Okay. We'll then rotate the LEDs. So scale is very similar to the map command in the Arduino. It essentially takes a series of parameters and it will scale the input to the output range that we desire. Let's go back to our code because in the code, it was already tucked in there. If you look very carefully, there was a line grayed out. Let me just zoom in even more for you. We can see it here. If I take away the backslash backslash, it becomes green. If I take it away completely, it now becomes active. Scale, I can press F1. Um, I can press F1 or I can start to type it in and it will give me the syntax for 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 this um, particular. Here's the syntax. So it's an integer. It takes a value in. Then there's a set of um, four other parameters. That is the low value and the high value. And it remaps from one range to another. And the range that I've selected is ADC value is my input. I'm going to assume that the lowest value is zero and the highest value is 4095. And I'm going to change that to 2 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds. Why I use 2 is because if it ever returned zero, we'd have, it would just delay forever and it's, it optically doesn't look right. So this is a way of scaling a number based upon a range.
program it. You can now it's changed without me changing it because it's changed the range. Let's look at the lab here. There we go. I'm just pushing that down to hold it steady. I'm going to rotate the LED, slowing down to half a second delay. Perfect. I rotate the pot the other way. Faster and faster. And, and that is just two milliseconds. So if we go back to the code, I'm going to put that on zero or the lowest value. We'll go back into the code, just change that so we can see the impact. Here we go. We're in here now. I'm just going to say, mate, 25 milliseconds, the minimum delay. Program that up. Into the lab. It's programming it. And now you can see that delay is quite clearly there. Now, that the camera is trying to capture it as best as it can. So if I set that to 100 milliseconds, the scale is now within the grasp of our control and we should be able to see that quite clearly in the camera. So, there we go. We've set the range to 100, minimum, and a maximum of 500 milliseconds. Very nice. So, what we wanted to achieve today was quite simple. It was to read at the AD value we're going to scale it and then set the LEDs to rotate, which is the same as we've done in the previous exercises. Back to PowerPoint. So we've done that. So the next video is we're going to use the switches on this board to set the state of the LEDs. So we're, the, we're not going to be using ADCs. We're just going to use the input switch, which is on this board, on your breadboard to set the state of the LEDs. But so we're developing the video here up and up and up. And this is very similar to the microchip um, set of demonstrations. I can't deny it. They're very good. It, they're very good process in terms of education. I've just adapted it for Great Car Basic and I give my thanks to microchip. And with that, I will call that a wrap. <laughs>